Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me today for a very special video as this is my once a year watch collection review. I'm going to be checking out what's changed from last year and what's going to be changing going into 2024. So let's get into it. So as I'm recording this video, it's currently a Saturday, so I'm going to be enjoying this whiskey throughout the video and I encourage you to do the same with any beverage of your choice. Now, if you're wondering what whiskey it is, it's a single malt 10 year old whiskey called Ardbeg, and it's uh, quite a nice smoky whiskey. So let's get into the video. So number one on this list is a very special watch to me because it's replaced my desire for the Rolex Datejust completely. And if you've been following the channel for this year, you would have seen this quite a lot. And it's my Omega Seamaster Aquaterra in blue. This is a 38 millimeter watch and it's so beautiful. I love it. I've currently got it on a cheap leather strap, but this thing has been on basically everything and it just works with everything. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous watch for number one. There's no actual order to this video, it's just sort of whatever watch I can get out of my box first, but this has probably been my most worn watch of the year. I absolutely love this watch. So um, yes, it's completely stopped me from wanting a date just, and I don't regret buying this whatsoever. I love this watch. So that's number one, let's go on to number two. So this is number two for this year, and it's a beauty, isn't it? This is the Longines Conquest Silver Dial, 41 millimeter. And as you can see, it's on a beautiful bracelet and is very good condition right now. So the reason that is, is because if you remember last year, I sent this off for service and it's come back in stunning condition. I love this. It looks brand new and it basically is because it had a new movement, new dial, new hands, and it was completely repolished and yeah, it's a beautiful watch. I've worn this quite a lot actually. It's sort of my go-to dress watch alongside the Aquaterra. Fantastic watch, it's a little bit dirty there, but yeah, really, really beautiful watch. Definitely one's gonna stay in the collection for many years to come. I love this thing, so that's number two. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, every collection needs a G-Shock and this is mine. It's a large G-Shock which is just black on black. I've had it for many years now and it's not leaving the collection anytime soon. I love this thing, it's my daily beater. I'll take this to the gym, I'll take this on walks, I'll take it wherever and it just does the job well. I don't really care if you're a millionaire or if you've got 100 quid to your name, the G-Shock is a necessity in every collection. So that's number three. So number four on this list is the Casio Royale and as you can see this is a beautiful watch, very sophisticated looking, very complicated but it's very affordable and it's a watch that I've had a personal touch to as you can see with that wave dial at the bottom there. Now this is actually in a head-to-head, -head, beat out the G-Shock with popularity on the channel. So you guys clearly love this watch and I do too. However, it hasn't had a lot of wrist time this year, simply because there's just so many watches to get through and there's others that I wear more often than this. So that's number four. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. I love this thing. Let's go on to number five. So number five is my only non-wristwatch in the video. This is my pocket watch. Now it doesn't actually work as you can see there. The second hand is frozen. But to be honest, I love it anyway. It's just a lovely piece to have, a bit of history, and I may get it fixed one day, but I'm not too bothered. But I thought I'd include it in the video anyway. I do love just opening it up and just seeing the crazy detail on the watch. I mean, it's just something you can really appreciate. And yeah, it's something that's definitely gonna stay in the collection, even though it doesn't work. That's number five. Now this is gonna take a little bit of a mid break and talk about the watches we've lost through the year. So this year I've taken two watches out of the collection. Quite recently, you would have seen in my last video, the Mido Ocean Star is no longer with us. It's a fantastic watch that I really did enjoy, but I just didn't wear it enough to warrant having such a valuable, beautiful asset locked away in a watch box doing nothing. So that's now with someone that's gonna appreciate it more. And the Casio Marlin, that's another one that's no longer with my collection. And that one, it hasn't gone so far because I've actually donated that to my brother who didn't have a watch and now wears that basically every day and loves the hell out of it. So I think it's a much better off in his hands than mine. So that's gonna be the two watches that have been, well, I guess discontinued from the collection for this year. So watch number six is the Buford Cavalli. It's quite hard to get the right lighting, but trust me when I say this thing is a beautiful watch. It's in forest green, and this was part of the early Kickstarter campaign. So this is quite a new special watch to me because I waited almost a full year for this watch. 
I absolutely love the fitment of this watch. The hands are really close to scraping the chapter ring, but they are just perfectly fitted so they don't. You have that sapphire bezel to give that retro feel. Um, drilled lugs, a beautiful case back which you unfortunately can't see because of the NATO strap, which I'm not sure really fits this watch. I think I might put it back on the Stingray that I had on before, but I thought I'd just try it out for the video. Obviously you have that lovely, that engraved crown. Absolutely fantastic, and Buford are doing amazing things with their company right now. They're expanding their company, and I support them all the way. So uh, that's the Buford Cavalli number six. Let's go on to number seven. So number seven on this list, you knew it was coming. It has to be here, the Omega Seamaster 300M Professional in black. I've currently got this actually on the Artem Straps Hydroflex to complement the watch. It actually does a great job with that black on black look, and I think this does look really great. Let me know what you think, by the way, down below. But this watch is something that's never going to leave the collection. This is a holy grail for me, and I've enjoyed every second of owning it. I've worn this a lot over the year. I'm quite happy to say that, actually, because last year I didn't wear it too much. So it's nice to get it out and about and just enjoy it like it's meant to be enjoyed. So that's number seven. Let's go on to number eight. So number eight is my Kronos. This is actually my most worn watch last year, and I have to say, this year it's also had a lot of attention. It's a fantastic Rolex Samarina homage, which is just really well made and it's great quality for the price, coming in at about £130. It's a really lovely watch. I'd recommend anyone to get this thing. And it's actually more accurate than both of my Omegas. Just, it's an incredible thing. It's on a dark brown leather strap, which is just a cheap leather. And it just looks, in my opinion, fantastic. So that's number eight. Let's go on to number nine. So up next is my Rotary. This is just a cheap, basic skeletonized watch that I've had in the collection for a few years now but unfortunately I've not worn this once this year this is my least worn watch and it's not because I don't love it I really do love it but I just love other watches more and um, yeah it's got a sentimental value to it but to be honest I don't really wear it out that much it's just sort of a uh, watch that lives in a box unfortunately but a great watch whenever I get it out so that's number nine let's go on to number ten so last but by no means least is my Rolex Submariner Vintage Homage, the San Martin. I absolutely love this watch. This is probably one of my most worn watches of the year because whenever I feel a bit nostalgic or I'm watching an old Bond film, I love to just put this on and pretend that I have that Rolex big crown on. It's a fantastic watch and it looks great. I've currently got it on that Bond NATO strap from Artem Straps. Really high quality strap and I think it just complements this sort of retro feeling watch. But yeah, a really great watch. This watch is a NH35 based movement and it's by a micro brand from AliExpress, but it's very affordable and it looks fantastic, keeps time well. And I've actually removed the second hand on this, not because I don't think it was good, but I think it looks even better without it, simply because the second hand was a bit oversized compared to the original and I think it looks cleaner without it. So yeah, bit of a custom mod, but that's all my watches. So let me know what you think down below. Which was your favorite watch throughout the video? And what do you think of my collection? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And to this video, goodbye.